Okay, this week is uh, week 8 of Web 290. Uh, the practice lab is going over error handling. Uh, it has two forms. One is an error, error handling form that shows up only on the screen when the error is handled. The second is an error handling form that shows up on the screen and emails you, the admin, of the error. Here's uh, some examples of emails that were sent from the second type of form uh, this morning. So you'll notice it has the exception error. It's to myself. It gives me the error message type 2. Error message is str replace expects three parameters. Only two are given. And then the exact file, file name of where it was found on my server and what line it's found on. So let's go back to the code here. When you go to the web page uh, initially to see the errors, this is what the page looks like as error one, error shows on the form, have you entered in your full name and, your, and an integer value. Error 2, error shows on form and emails the admin. So let's do the first one. And this is going to do a post to a uh, PHP form for validation. I'm going to leave nothing in the second, even though it says enter in a value, I'm going to put nothing in there. And hit submit. Chuck Conco variable must be a number. Validation denied. I'm going to go ahead and put in there number 1. Variable cannot be less than a thousand. Validation denied. So I'll put in a thousand. Variable is valid. Let's try something else like the letter A. You see how it's spinning, it's validating it. Will not validate a, a valid uh, anything but a integer or a uh, empty quotes, meaning nothing in the value. So that's the first one. The second one is error two. I have to reload this page here. What error two does is basically goes to a uh, P, this exception two dot PHP I purposely throw an error and it puts up here a better looking page error versus just a whatever the ugly error would put on the page. In fact, what it would put on the page if I didn't catch it, didn't do an error catch, uh, would be this message here would show up on the page for the user to see. And the whole purpose behind validation is for the user to see, not to see that message, but to see a formatted message from the developer. And then back behind the scenes, administrator has been contacted uh, via email with something like this. So let's go ahead and look at the code here. We'll first look at the index page for this one I, I created. Just a simple index page that has a having the user enter in their full name and integer value and submitting it to a uh, exception.php page as a post. The second is just a, a hyperlink to exceptions2.php. So let's look at exception one first, which brings over to that form full name and integer. Full name and number is a, is a value is bringing over. So what I've done on this one is when a page loads, it gets a post from the number they entered in and their username. It does a try catch. Here's the error catching that beginning to use this week in your code. Try catches will actually catch errors and make a more user friendly message which is a purpose that we're going over this week. Second purpose though is to also give the admin some understanding of it uh, by sending it to an email which will be the next one we look at. This page just shows it on the form itself. So in the try it's going to try this portion of code. 
If it fails, it's going to catch it here and catch the exception. And then it's going to echo out validation denied, whatever that exception is. The exception get message is going to come from if, the, if it's caught in the exception message here. So it's going to be username variable cannot be less than 1,000, validation denied. Username variable must be a number, validation denied, or username variable is valid. The first thing I do in the, uh, in the try statement is you need to have a, a left bracket and a right bracket in the try. Then you have the catch on the next line. Exception. This is a, a exception is actually what I've created um, a variable called exception that's going to be actually throwing it here on these two lines. I'm forcing a throw, throw exception for this example, which you could do the same in your code as well to make a more user-friendly message for any other type of application. So it echoes out the exception, whatever those exceptions were. It could be either if it's less than a, it's a valid number, but less than a thousand. The variable cannot be less than a thousand. Or if it's not a number, it'll just say variable must be a number. Okay. So it gets that message here. It echoes it out, validation denied. So if it is a numeric number they brought across, then it goes into the first if statement. But before we go to the if statement, uh, the sub if statement, it takes and we know now it's a number. It takes and does what's called an int val to that variable, which converts it to a number, that string to a number. Now we can use arguments, comparison arguments, in this case, the lesser than symbol is x less than a thousand if it's not it's going to say uh, or if it is less than a thousand then it's going to say username variable cannot be less than a thousand if it is not a number it's going to go to this else path and it's going to throw an exception that says username variable must be a number if it passes both of these uh, arguments, then it's going to echo out username variable is valid. So if a catch happens here, meaning it's less than a thousand, or here, meaning it's not a number or it's null, it's going to go to the catch statement. The second one, exceptions two, we're actually including on the first line an include error.php. The error.php is found in the download for this week, week's lab. You've got a PHP folder in the download and inside the PHP folder, PHP mail folder is all the files needed to mail, use mail processes and procedures in a PHP file. The only file you need to be concerned with in here is the email file, email.php, that contains information about your unique Gmail account. In the step-by-step -step I have this week in the PDF file here on the notes goes over setting up First of all, you've got to set up your Gmail account for processing error handling or processing emails using the SMTP server. So as we go on down here, I believe I have it towards the bottom part of the message. Let's put it in the first part of the notes here. 
either way, what you've got to do is you've got to go into, um, oh, I have it here in the exercise part portion of updating your Gmail. Um, basically, you'll need to go to your Gmail and confirm that um, you have set it to forwarding and that it can be used as SMTP. Uh, walk you through there on the first part of the video, I believe, on doing that. Uh, fairly simple, you just log into the Gmail account, your Gmail account, you'll go over into the settings portion of Gmail, my screen resize here, and you're going to go to the forwarding and pop IMAP, you need to make sure uh, a couple things here. You need enable pop for mail that arrives from now on. Enable IMAP. Make sure it says uh, this auto expunge on should automatically be on yours, but I'd make sure that's the case. What this does just immediately updates the server when you have uh, deleted an email. So basically it's just the enabling pop, enabling IMAP, saving your changes, and then you'll be able now to use the SMTP server within Gmail to begin receiving mails like you see here in mine uh, using the Gmail server, SMTP server. So that's the first thing you've got to do before you edit this code, make sure and turn that on on Gmail to be able to forward and pop uh, to use SMTP server on Gmail. It is free to use so might as well use it. For development it works perfect. So when you open up the email.php file, uh, remember that is found inside of the folder in this week's download um, for the lab, for week 8 lab. It's in the PHP folder in week 8 and PHP mail which is a number one mail uh, function used in PHP to send mail all you need to do is put your Gmail account on this line your password on this line save it everything else you're going to keep the same mail server host and port number and SMTP authorization to turn on SMTP authentication so everything else will leave the same except for these two lines username and password you'll change now going back to the exception 2, so you're including that air.php page. Inside the air.php page, it includes, um, first of all, a session start to start, start the session variable, uh, bringing them over from other pages, in this case it would be uh, email. Then there's a function called process error function and in this process error function it has a few arguments that's going to be brought into it type error message file name and error line inside the function you'll notice the first line it brings in is the include statement of that email.php we talked about just a second ago on updating your email and password you can put in there your email address your gmail address on this line for email web app name you're going to keep exception app if you named it differently it would show up uh, you would see that in the actual uh, email on the subject line it would change so if I click on this you can see the uh, error and then it gives me the error message and so that just basically gives when it comes in an email it'll actually say Web290 error catch app. The reason it says that as the user name on the from address is because of this right here. Whatever you name in here is what it will be called on the from address. You notice I have a do not reply at Gmail, meaning if 
someone wants to reply to that email address, it wouldn't go anywhere. And the reason you want to do that, especially on these types of messages, is it's made it's made specifically just for um, information only, so not for communication. So that's why I put in here a set from do not reply. So you've got the include statement, email is yours, web app name exception app, message, uh, this says error message, the error type it's brought over, error message, what kind of error message it is, the error file name, and the line that it was found on. Where it says change your email address, here you can keep it as it is on mine. The message is going to pull it from here. Subject is error in the email. If you change that, it would change that in the subject area as well in your email. All body, this is if they don't have a HTML compatible viewer, it'll show this up on the message. Then message HTML body. It's going to grab the body into the message and make HTML. Add address, this is going to be your email address. And the web app name is exception app. So here it's going to try to send the mail. It says if not mail is sent, it's going to give it a mail error on your screen. Otherwise, it's just going to exit. So here in this part, it's going to try to mail the error. So if I go back and attempt to do this over again, error two, which is the one we've been working on. So it should now have sent a message to my Gmail account. There it is. The one just sent this morning. 1028. There's the error message. Now let's look actually at the code for the error message. The exceptions to. Exceptions to PHP. It includes the error.php file that we just went over. It includes the email brought over. Which in this case, for this example, we didn't bring an email because I changed the code uh, to just be a hyperlink into there, uh, into the page. So this one you can disregard because it's not going to be used at all in here at all. We do need this though, the include error.php. Remember that includes everything we just went over as far as uh, comprising the email address, creating it, uh, running this function, process error, which creates the email address and sends it. So that's included. Then there's a function error handler, handler function that we create here. And it has error type, error message, error file, and error line. These statements here are aired out because they're no longer needed. Uh, and it was for testing for at Rock Valley College when I was on, on campus. It echoes out better looking email error or email page error. Errors have occurred while executing this page. The administrator has been contacted with the error. Please try again. Then it processes the error. This process error is actually ran from the error.php page. There's a the process error. The process error uses these arguments or needs these arguments, error type, error message, error file, and error line, which is brought here on the error handler. So when this page first loads, this function handler is not ran yet. Okay, the include error.php is, but the function error handler is not ran. It's only ran if there's an error that occurs. So the first thing you set an error handler on the page, call, and in this case it's called handler, and any error that happens on this page is going to call the function handler. If this is not initiated, this handler 
specialized handler, air handler function will not be called. We're going to set the string for professor, spelled wrong on purpose. String variable is professor, conquil is great. We're going to try to use the str place to replace uh, my correct name. And here is the actual final. This is just code has been morphed over the semesters. The one that may pay attention to is starting here on this line here where it says because of wrong parameter uh, count takes three parameters. Echo, so normally the str place takes three parameters or it's forced to take three parameters required to. You'll notice on this one I do put the incorrect spelling, the correct spelling, but I don't put in a variable, a string variable, which it needs for str replace. And that's where the error comes in. Go ahead and save this and run it again. And one last time, look at the email. Should have gotten a new email address. Email. There it is. Get the. Uh, Ten thirty-two. That was a new one that just came in. All right, and so there is my email address, my from email address. Do not reply. Uh, the error message two type two. The error message is str place expects a three, at least three parameters two were given, and then the file name and the line number. Now all of this information. Error type 2, message, file name, and line number uh, are built in error handling in PHP. Okay? It's built in error handling in PHP. And so when this is when this error is caught, when this error is caught here on this line, and that's where it's actually fired at right there. And it goes here to the error handler function. The error handler function actually, when it's caught in PHP, will give this function the type it is, the message, the file, and the line. You notice in this one here, I do not give any prefab messages um, except for at the end that the user sees, but that's all from me. But as far as what's sent to the process error, is all built in PHP handler information. Type 2, type 2 actually means it's a syntax logic error. The other one was the message itself, str replace expects at least three parameters to given. That's given from PHP itself on the message part of the error. And then the file name, again from PHP, and the line number again from PHP. So in the code actually line 41 is right here that's where the error occurred and so it's easy for a developer to see this email address know what the error was, know what file it came from and in that file what line it came from. So that is the in-class or the uh, lab practice lab for week 8 and then the exercise homework for week eight, you're expanding on the email validation um, portion. You, if you, I suggest trying the week eight Gmail SMTP. Uh, it should work on your local computer, um, but you can attempt both of these. But I would say first try the Gmail setup. In the Gmail setup, when you download this Gmail setup.zip, it'll give you instructions of what to do and also the code needed for the lab. So let me go ahead and see that 
folder real quick. I just downloaded it. So yeah, these are the, this is the code for the PHP mail. Remember, it, you'll have to update the email.php. There's a validate. And it has index, thanks, and validate.php in there. And so for this one, you're going to unzip the files to your local. I suggest doing the, uh, the Gmail one first. Configuring Gmail to and pop set up. I have the information here how to do that. When you click on that, it opens up a PDF file that I believe walks through the same process we did uh, just a second ago. So follow those instructions. Then add your Gmail username to the mail.php file, which we went over earlier in the lab. Uh, and this one uh, challenges to add two new fields that are not included in the index.php for validation. This is the current index.php. Uh, add validation of those two new fields in the validate.php portion. And then this link should take you to a podcast from my tunes for week eight, uh, which I think already is in there for the validation. So watch that. Create a new folder in week eight. Um, on your external site, upload it as always, and send the information below as you do each week, which is the uh, email, or not the email, your website directly to that page, and then upload the zip of the week eight folder. And so let's look at the example here of week eight validation. Field required. And bolding here, fields required, required fields are bolded. So I'm going to put in first and last name, test for subject, my email address, put in a website, comment, and submit. And this is the thanks page it was sent to. And let's real quickly look at the code for that one. Same setup that we did on the lab for the email portion for validation, but there will be differences for the validation on the form. And I believe you're going to be adding in two new uh, areas, two new fields for the lab that aren't currently on the form. Okay, so let's look at the index page first. The index page here gives uh, required fields are in bold, and it's uh, your name, subject, email, or the bolded one, websites unbolded. These are just input text. The name's important because we'll be using the validate.php in the post in just a second. So your name is your name, subject is subject, email is email for the name. Website input, uh, selecting a website name 
here is a text name website and here they just enter in the name of the website that they like do you like this website and then it gives uh, three radio buttons the same name for radio buttons since there's going to be only one of the three can be selected and have a yes no one I'm not sure by default yes is going to be checked how do you find us name on this one is how the initial values please select and then the, the other values are Google, Yahoo, link from site, word of mouth, and other. Comments. Text area on this one, the name is comments. It's 10 rows and 40 columns. And then the submit button. So that's it for the uh, index page. On the validate page, when everything's brought over, first thing it's going to do is come up here and include that email.php page, which we're going over in the lab. Do a session start for the session variables. Bring in all of the variables from the prior form. And using a check input, we'll go over in just a second, of each one of these variables. Once it checks input, it's going to have a value that plugs into each one of these. Then it goes over some preg match that we've already done. It preg matches the email, the URL, then it starts to format the message in the email right here here's where you'll put in your gmail account and your first and last name the message which is from above the subject also from above the body message, the alt body message we went over earlier in the lab. Converting it to HTML. Then the address is going to be your email address, your name. Then testing the sent, uh, send email. If it's sent, does not send properly, it'll give the error Y. Else, it does do a redirect using this header location thanks which will immediately do a redirect and then exit. Now let's look at the function that's uh, the functions the function that has ran check input multiple times on all of these posts. So here's the check input function. It has the data and then problem by default is empty quotes. The data is the echo or the post is the data on each one of them. To the right of this is a only needed if it's a required field. If you remember on the prior index form, your name, subject, uh, comments was validated and needed. So here let's go ahead and look at the input. So here we have data being plugged into a name variable. It trims data of any uh, spaces on the right or left, plugs it into data itself. Then it trims any slashes that might be in there, any HTML special characters. And the reason for this is it's this is to save for SQL injection that could cause problems on your PHP server. Then it says here problem and the data are empty, meaning nothing is brought over. Um, it's going to show the error, return the data. The show error part, it says please correct the following, echoing my error. My error, you'll notice, brings over the problem, which in this case is going to be the field name, whatever that, whatever that field name is. I'm sorry, it's going to be the message, whatever that message is. And so, if problem and the length of the data, and the only time the length of the data would be empty is if uh, they basically entered in no data whatsoever in that. So it had to be data in there. If there's some data in there, this will not be caught. It will be greater than zero. The length will be greater than zero. So this logic problem and the length of data being not being zero 
if there's a problem and the data is empty, then it's going to show the error. The error is going to show just the problem. Now you'll remember from up above, not all these gave a second argument for the problem. Your name, subject, and comments did. If we look at the index, your name, subject, and email was required. Going over to the validate, your name, subject, and comments I actually added for validation on mine here. So if I go ahead now and leave out comments in this one and hit submit, notice it says please correct the error, following error comments. All right. Email, that is actually validated, I believe, at the first part of the code. Yeah, it's validated up here in the first part of the code. after this portion is ran. So email I do not I do not want to validate it here, which would be just the, this validation check input only validate that there's something in there. Okay. So if you want a validated field, all you need to do is make sure that you have something to the right of the message argument, if you leave nothing in the argument to the right, uh, if you only have one argument in the check input, it's not going to validate any field except for the ones that are ran here below this. Email is validated, URL is always validated, those are the only two. So those two you don't need to, do not need to put a second argument for check input like uh, your name, subject, and comments did because these are actually validated below. So this preg match validates email always. This preg match validates URL address always. All right. So by adding two other or by adding another field, uh, which is a challenge for this week, uh, you can again add another subject line or add another uh, input type text possibly. I'm going to do them real quick here. And this might be something like, I don't know, favorite color. And I'll replace subject with color. Validate back over to the validate. I'm going to add a new. Copy the last one. And rename this to color. Post name was color, and I'll put in here enter fave color. Save it. Go back, refresh the page. Save that first. Might have a problem with the name colors. So I'm going to put colors in there. Might be reserved. I'm going to do colors instead of color. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and purposely leave out color this time. No color. 
call up an invalid email website leave that like it is to Google I'll put it back add in I'm leaving out favorite color just to see if this works for the validation there it is I was grabbing that favorite color message from the validation here so if you wanted to change that message here's where you would do it decide you're gonna word favorite in full there leave the name favorite instead of just fave we'll go back try that again there it is so that concludes the uh, lesson on the validation again downloading the gmail smtp is the one i recommend configuring your smtp to work um, to use SMTP, add in your username and password in mail.php, adding two new fields. I showed in this example the favorite color one. Um, updating your index, updating your validate.php for that new uh, or new fields that you've added. And make sure it's entering that second argument, which will tell the user what it is they're supposed to do. The podcast you really don't need to watch because it's going to be posted here. It already is up above. Then the one from today as well will be posted. And then once you're finished and it tests correctly, upload it to your external and post everything below. And have a great week.